Yo, 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 what is up everybody? We're continuing on with our mini series on spreadsheets. So let's get hacking. Welcome back to Wood Hacks. I'm James with Mike Mellum, and this is part two of our mini series on spreadsheets. In this episode, we'll go over some of the tools, icons, and shortcut menus to help you better understand what is available to you. This should be a fairly quick episode, I hope, so let's jump right into it. Okay, so here we are in the spreadsheet again, or edit design data, and I wanna start by going over the icons at the top of the interface so you have a better idea of what they are, what they do, and when you might need to use them. Starting from left to right, we've got save, cut, copy, and paste. Everyone should be pretty familiar with these, so I'm not gonna waste any more time talking about them. After that, we've got the insert function button. This will open the function arguments window. You can use this to help you write and read formulas. We're gonna be going into this more in the next episode, so I'm just gonna move on to the next icon, which is force recalculation. For the most part, spreadsheets will calculate as you work through them. There are a few cases, though, where you might need to use this. Finding cyclical calculations would be one of them. Next, we've got the undo and redo buttons. Again, pretty self-explanatory, so let's just keep moving. After those is the find and replace button. You can also access this using Control F or Control H. The find and replace tool is very helpful. However, you need to be very specific if you are using this, especially if you're using the replace all command. For example, if you're searching for a text string, let's say you want to replace the with that. If you aren't specific, it will replace any occurrence of the letters T-H-E. So a word like theater would become that editor. I'm not even sure what that is. In this case, you'd want to type space the space and replace with space that space. Same thing applies to numbers, so be very specific. A helpful tip is to use the find all command first so you can check to see if there's anything that comes up that you wouldn't want replaced. Using the find all command, you can also go down the list, select the specific item you want, and then use the replace, not replace all, to replace the occurrence in just that selection. Moving on, we've got the name manager button. This is helpful if you're making a lot of modifications to products or sub-assemblies, especially if you're copying and pasting prompts from other workbooks. Copying and pasting from other workbooks can result in duplicate prompts resulting in overlaps. Overlapping names can wreak havoc on a spreadsheet. So use the name manager, check to show overlapping only, and fix any issues you may have. This is a step that I highly recommend you do prior to saving a product or sub-assembly back to your project or library. Next, the filter parts button. Options here will display all of the parts or just the parts with a quantity greater than zero. Personally, I prefer to show all the parts. After that, there's the toggle part thickness column button. You may be wondering why the values in the thickness column are blank. Well, that's because this is actually an override. A value here will force the part to draw at that thickness, ignoring the thickness assigned to the material. This does not change the actual thickness of the part or the material. Continuing on, the toggle hidden columns A through P button. If you are responsible for modifying, creating, and maintaining products in your library, this can be a very helpful tool. Most commonly, you'd be using this to access the perfect graining cells, and maybe possibly the grain override cells. And moving along, we have the Show Spreadsheet Errors button. This is a helpful tool to search through the workbook to find any errors you may have. Again, another step I'd recommend you do before saving a product or sub-assembly. After that is the Set Standard Column Widths button. 
This is just going to set all the column widths back to their default size. Nothing too spectacular here. And lastly, we've got the Workbook Designer button. Workbook Designer is a helpful tool as it allows you to access all the other workbooks that are linked to this product. This is more of an advanced tool and I'll be going over it in more depth in a later episode. But in cases where you would most likely use this would be when reverse engineering a formula to see what values from other workbooks are contributing to its calculations. And one more thing to note, you may notice as you get working in the spreadsheet that some of these icons are only available in certain worksheets. All right, with the shortcut menus accessible by right-clicking in a cell, depending on the cell you select and the worksheet you are working in, will bring up different tools. Many of these, again, are pretty self-explanatory, but some of the cooler tools available would be Paste Special which allows you to paste certain aspects of a copied cell. And the Microvalm clipboard. Depending on which workbook you're working in, you can add parts, machine tokens, hardware, sub-assemblies, or prompts. This is a very helpful tool if you have something common or custom that may not exist in all the products that you want to be able to add quickly with all its parameters. In the Cut Parts tab, if you select a cell in the material or edge banding columns, you can use the change material or change edge banding functions to open the material file and manually select the material or material pointer. When accessing the shortcut menu in the prompts tab, the most used commands will be insert prompt, delete prompt, and define name. Define name will only appear if you are in the value column. One thing to note with the insert and delete prompt commands are that they will only add or delete the cells associated to the prompt. Using insert row or delete row will affect everything that might be contained in that row. Drawing tokens, virtual machine routes, and so forth. So if you're not careful, you could delete a whole bunch of information. While we're talking about inserting and deleting prompts, one thing that is important to understand is that width, height, and depth must remain as the top three rows. Inserting prompts above, in between, or deleting these will cause problems. Don't cause problems. If you don't want these visible for whatever reason, use a six in the control type column or a one in the hide prompt column. All right, there you have it. Some of the spreadsheet tools at your disposal. Remember, power users are made in the spreadsheet. It is my goal to help you become a power user and take your microfilm journey to the next level. So get yourself familiar with these tools so you can start progressing. Also, stay tuned for the next episode where we'll break down the formula editor and function arguments tools. And as usual, stay sharp, Stay focused and stay awesome. And I'll see you in the next Wood Hacks. Yo, 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 what is up, everybody? We're continuing. Oh. Yo, 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 what is up, everybody? We're continuing on. Yo. <coughs> Yo, 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 what is up, everybody? We're... <clears throat> Let's go again. You're killing me, Smalls.